A lot has changed since my first seven round Eagles mock draft on this channel a few weeks ago. So I thought that now the big event is under one month away, it would be a good time to take a second crack at predicting what the Philadelphia Eagles are going to do. Only this time, there is a shocking trade in the first round. So if you're new to this channel, if you like this kind of content, make sure you leave a like, hit that subscribe button. We can't do this without you. We want to build the biggest Philadelphia sports community that we can. And make sure that you're following us on Twitter, at Liam Jenkins 21 at Philadelphia SN and you have got daily Philadelphia sports content at phillysportsnetwork.com. Now on to the mock draft and we're going to start off with a shocker. The Eagles and Vikings are no strangers by now. It's a budding NFC rivalry but they're also trade partners. Of course that notable Sam Bradford trade from a couple of years ago sparked an entire new era in Philadelphia and now the two will be trade partners once more with the Eagles and Vikings switching picks so the Eagles bump up to the 18th pick in the draft and then then exchanging players in order to make that worthwhile for the Vikings. So in exchange, the Eagles are going to give up Halapulavati Vitae and running back Wendell Smallwood. Now both of these players could easily be replenished through the draft and the Vikings are going to have to reshuffle four of their five starters on the offensive line and could well use some running back depth just to make sure they've got enough girth going in towards the 2019 season. Now if you partner that with let's say a fourth round pick next year, I think that is more than enough ammunition to get the Eagles up up to a point where we're going into a first round pick swap because at the end of the day if we look at a draft chart it's going to cost them around 700 points I think you can easily say Vita and Smallwood are worth that much using that draft chart. Vita's versatility to play at both sides of the bookend could be massive here and Smallwood's flash production is only going to add some spice to the trade but the Vikings have also been shopping a player around who could interest the Eagles. That of course is Laquan Treadwell at 6 foot 2, 215 pounds, the former first round pick out of Ole Miss has been slightly disappointing. He's been unable to stay on the field. He's been battling injuries and that slow 40 yard dash time did come back to haunt him. We knew those concerns going in but last year there was somewhat of a resurgence. He had 300 yards and his first ever NFL touchdown. Now bizarrely Treadwell is still at age 23. He is so young in his development and if the Eagles have one more year to see if they can grab something out of him. I think in his size they could sit him behind old Sean Jeffrey, use him as a red zone weapon and just add an extra element of explosiveness into that offense and that for me partner with a slight replenishing through the draft on the offensive line makes this move worth it especially considering who the Eagles are going to be moving up to take. That man is Clemson's Christian Wilkins and when I was looking at players available at 25 it's hard to imagine an impact player coming in straight away like Nasir Adderley wouldn't necessarily be a starter and while you could draft Josh Jacobs I do think there is much better value to be had later on in the draft but the one position where you can really maximize that potential is on the interior defensive line and Christian Wilkins for me epitomizes someone that plays with that grit that the Eagles need. He'd be best suited to a three technique role in the Jim Schwartz defense and I think he's got the burst, the athleticism and the sheer explosiveness needed to overcome that slight lack of length that some are putting on his name. He's six foot four, 300 pounds and while he may not have that massive frame that some defensive coordinators covet, he's got a nice array of pass rushing moves, he plays with absolute power and he can leverage himself in the run game and anchors fairly well. I do think this will be a monumental pickup for the Eagles considering the biggest thing this defensive line missed before was of course that depth. That Having Bo Allen and Destiny Vio in 2017 they missed that production and they were forced to rely on practice squad promotees. If you can develop a future running mate for either Fletcher Cox or Malik Jackson a guy who's got first round grades all over him. Someone that, that had 5.5 sacks last season along with 14 tackles for a loss. If the Eagles wish to sustain themselves as an elite run defense, then I think someone of the penetrative ability of Christian Wilkins is just too much of a home run to miss on. So a slight trade up, they get themselves back a wide receiver as well who can mortgage him in the passing game, but I think this could be a great move for the Eagles, as would their first of two second round selections. Darnell Savage out of Maryland. What more could you want that runs a 40 yard dash safety. in 4.36 seconds? The man, I hate to say the pun, but is an absolute savage. If you want someone that is going to be a bullhawk, you can get two kinds of safety here. 
here. They have one in Sendejo who will hit hard, play down in the box and get dirty in the run game. But the Eagles were dreadful when it came to generating turnovers last year and Savage was a genuine playmaker as a senior. He had four interceptions, two pass breakups and 5.5 tackles for a loss. He had eight pass breakups in the year before that as a junior and I think that this is a guy that although he's not quite as stout and as long as some of the other safeties, he would fit this scheme perfectly. He's twitchy, he's got a quick back pedal, he thrives in off coverage and slot situations, but he's got the burst to come down on top of routes. And with seven interceptions over the last two years, this is the playmaker, that dinner defensive back that the team have coveted for quite some time. So Savage comes in to work alongside McLeod, to work alongside Andrew Sandejo, while Malcolm Jenkins does all the dirty work inside the box. The Eagles finally get the running back they need with their next pick. It's Darrell Henderson out of Memphis. And if you've seen my running back video from a few days ago, you'll know why that is. He averaged 8.9 yards per carry, which is literally ridiculous, and nearly 150 yards per game. The man was an absolute monster and easily is the most explosive running back in this class. Now, the most exciting part of his game, without a shadow of a doubt, is that he's just freakishly athletic. He's stunning in his pro days. He's got plenty of teams pining over him. He's receiving numbers. He had 19 catches for 295 yards. That's a catch rate of 82.6%. He's going to be effective wherever the Eagles use him. And he is diligent, he's intelligent, and he has got the quickness to just burst through the hole that the Eagles offensive line would open up. So for me here, the most bang for your buck runner in this draft class will be getting Henderson in the bottom of the second round. The replacement for Halepu Levati Vaisai in this situation is going to be Titus Howard out of Alabama State. I drafted him last time for the Eagles in this mock and I'm not veering off that path. At 6 foot 5, 322 pounds, the man is just a freak athlete and the fact he was a former basketball player, a former quarterback, you can see that in his footwork. He's a very fluid mover around the ball. He keeps a nice strong base, a firm posture as defensive ends constantly try to reset their hands and get around him. He's able to stay composed at the line of scrimmage which helps him massively and I think that his ability to actually seal the edge is a massive massive bonus for the Eagles and what they love most in their tackles is athleticism a guy that can get up the field help in screens and really elevate this run game which they're really starting to focus on right now. Titus Howard is far more than just another project player this is someone that we saw Jeff Stoutland take a very fine eye to during his pro day recently and it's a man that has shot up draft boards in recent weeks because the coachable asset of his game are just that high in terms of ceiling where you can almost not afford to let him slip through your fingers. As of right now, I think the experience he has to his name isn't quite where you'd like it to be. He's not going to come in and start right away. and He doesn't really generate a lot of momentum with his lower body. But when you look at the technicalities of what he does with his upper body, his ability to really get off that line of scrimmage, to drive through opposing pass rushes and to keep that firm base, the Eagles could be on to an eventual starting tackle if they take a chance on Titus Howard. Next up, David Long had me purring. For me, he's one of the most versatile linebackers in this draft. If you want him at safety, if you want him in the middle, if you want him at a weak side, I think he can take all three boxes. The problem is some people don't see him as explosive enough to play safety, but as we all know, courtesy of Nate Jerry, the Eagles love finding that in their linebackers. And last season, with 108 tackles, 19 for a loss and 7 sacks, Long proved that he is not just another name to be overlooked. And available at the heart of this draft, he has got the power, the explosiveness, and more importantly, the athleticism to cover the middle of the field and replace Jordan Hicks. Now, the Eagles like finding talent in the heart of the draft, especially at the linebacker position. And I think Long plays with such great instincts that when they're backed up by that level of athleticism, what you've got is someone that, as we can see there, can really be dominant in sideline to sideline speed. It was the biggest downfall of Michael Kendricks. We've seen it with a couple of the middle linebackers as well. The Eagles need that assurance that going laterally, their linebackers are capable. And when you put someone like David Long alongside Nigel Bradham, you're just going to have a very lethal combination where Bradham brings the muscle and Long brings that lateral snappiness to his game and the potential to just carve into the backfield and make an abundance of plays on running back because he reads it so well. So for me, making this even more likely is of course the fact that in the last three years, the Eagles have taken Wendell Smallwood, Russell Douglas and Shelton Gibson, all product of West Virginia. So if you like rapid linebacker play and even more like singing songs by John Denver then well this may be the dream pick for you. 
Next up, the Eagles get their slot receiver of the future. And just because he's 5 for 8, do not overlook the receiver from Georgia State. Honey Hart is a ticking time bomb and someone that can generate separation with ease despite tight press coverage from bigger defensive backs. And that says a lot. But the fact he had over 200 receptions at Georgia State, along with 13 rushing attempts and excessive usage on returns, tells me he's a very versatile receiver. But most predominantly, he's going to be used as an underneath threat. Someone that's going to hit you on slants and curls and that sort of thing. That's where he's at his most dangerous because he is so explosive in and out of his breaks. He's going to be very vicious and physical in the stem, which for someone of his size is quite rare to see, but he eats up acres of space when he gets the ball in his hands. He has great ball skills around him, phenomenal body control. He does not waste time in stride. And for me, if he's able to develop a little bit under Nelson Aguilar, this could be the guy that steps up if Aguilar is to seek that long-term payday elsewhere. And our final pick in the Eagles mock draft remains unchanged. It's a reuniting for Carson Wentz and former Bison teammate quarterback Easton Stick. Jeffrey Leary went out in the NFL owners meetings and said that he wants to return to the days of the Andy Reid era. Where if it's not every year, then it's every other year that the Eagles draft a quarterback. And this is someone that of course is a pro ready guy that plays in the same offense that Carson Wentz did. And with the current quarterback pecking order set as it is in this year's draft class, I do think that Easton Stick should be targeting that sort of environment he walks into and in my opinion there'd be no better place than Philadelphia than under a mentor he's already worked under who can keep developing his game as a tall quarterback that is mobile that can hurt you in dual threat situations and bring some of those NDSU mentalities into the Philadelphia locker room. Sure he's not as accurate as Carson Wentz and this is a developmental arm but if you look at the progress that Nate Sudfeld has made then I think that Eastern Stick could well become a valuable asset for this team in years to come. So it's a reunion for Eastern and stick and Carson Wentz but what do you think guys who should the Eagles be drafting in this year's class has your favorite draft crush made this list if not let me know in the comments please hit that subscribe button if you're new around here and from myself Liam Jenkins I'll see you next time for another episode of an Eagles mock draft